Hi there, you're with Budget Byte 2014 on businessstandard.com. I'm Nikhil Anandar, and on this segment, we're going to be discussing taxes in the budget with the deputy CEO of KPMG, Mr. Dinesh Kanabar. There's been a lot of speculation in the media on what Finance Minister Arun Jaitley could do. Could he tinker around substantially with tax rates and tax slabs? Will there be big announcements on retrospective amendments and the much delayed reforms on GST and DTC? Let's find out. Uh, Mr. Kanabar, I want to start, uh, in fact, with your views on. Uh, on direct taxes, uh, do you think uh, this is going to be a radical budget in the sense that uh, there's been expectation that tax slabs could be raised uh, from 2 lakh to 5 lakh? Uh, is that uh, broadly uh, in line with what you're thinking as well? So a couple of things. The government is, uh, of course, having serious uh, views on how development should happen. And there is this whole issue on how do we get FDI back on track. Mm -hmm. And a question which inevitably comes up is how do you marry the requirements of tax reserves the development needs sure. and what contributes larger to the tax kitty? Sure. Does the development bring in more kitty or an aggressive tax administration bring sure. in a larger tax kitty? Just go back to the proposition which you mentioned about whether the exemption limit will go up from 2 lakhs to 5 lakhs and mm. I don't know whether it will. Mm. But if it did, mm -hmm. for example, it would do a few things. It would remove hundreds of thousands of people who are in the tax net out of the tax net. Sure. And a couple of things uh, interesting we have seen. Every time we have seen that the taxable income limit rises, uh, there are people who really are currently just above that limit actually declare higher income to fall in that limit. So that's one very interesting development. Right. Uh, second is the tax officers who are now looking at smaller things have a chance to really look at some of the bigger things and do justice to what they need to do. Uh, clearly there's a loss of revenue and if that loss of revenue has to be made up, then one will have to increase the rates of taxes on the other taxpayers. So it cannot be that you will at one level increase the threshold from 2 to 5 and then not increase the rates of tax for others. So it's a fine balance. I don't know whether he will take it in one shot. Hopefully over a period of time that will happen. Not, not but, right. but what would you, uh, you know, want the finance minister to do as somebody who's looking at direct taxes? We have a scenario where... Uh, People are unable to save because of high inflation, uh, but the government is fiscally constrained uh, to be able to give uh, bonanza sorts for taxpayers. So, you know, how do you sort of walk that tightrope? No, so, in fact, and, and you again hit a very important point. The moment you take the exemption limit from 2 to 5 lakhs, uh, you are leaving taxable income in the hands of the people and that goes back to the economy and what impetus does it provide to the economy. Having said that, a radical change from 2 to 5 lakhs is not something which I see. Do I see 2 lakhs going to 3, 3.5 lakhs? Certainly I do. Right, and also exemption limits under ATC and ATD and stuff Those like that. Those are minor things. Those are small tinkerings. The big ticket thing is, how is what is the exemption limit? I don't think... Uh, ATC, for example, there has always been this proposition that rather than tinker with it on a year-to-year -year basis, why do we not link it to inflation? Right. So it, it goes on automatically going up. That's something which is more what is required to be done. Right. There's also been a lot of speculation in the media uh, in some sense about, you know, this being a middle class sort of you know friendly budget that Modi would want to actually uh, give something back to the middle classes. So, so you know things like uh, the abolition of uh, the STT, for instance, or uh, what Chidambaram unleashed in terms of the rich tax or the SUV tax. Do you see all of those things uh, being tinkered around with? So tell me, how is the rich tax impacting the middle <laughs> class? By definition, people who are making that money. Well, a lo lo lot of people did argue that you know taxing people above that threshold would actually tax tantamount to tax in the middle you know, class. Yeah. So I, I do think that, again, uh, there has been this RBI versus government view on inflation versus growth, etc., etc. And I do think that there will be a number of things which will happen. Uh, so, for example, uh, even the excise duties, even the import duties are mm -hmm. a number of things which are necessary for the middle class. I do expect them to be rationalized mm -hmm. as we move towards goods and services tax. Yeah. So goods and services tax is what's going to take that little bit of time, uh, maybe over the next six to eight months before it can actually be implemented. But I do expect to see a rationalization of duties in the meantime. Right. We'll get to uh, GST in a bit. But the other big headline that, you know, particularly corporate India is looking for is, you know, some sort of amendments in the retrospective uh, taxation. Do you see that coming through? What sort of language? are you expecting uh, the finance minister to talk in? So the, the one item which has been a single big dampener to mm -hmm. foreign investment in India mm -hmm. has been those retrospective amendment a la Vodafone. And although Vodafone is one which is in sort of the public eye and gaze, there are a number of other SSEs who are similarly impacted. Does a person who has a withholding tax obligation 
who interpreted the law in a particular manner and it got validated by the Supreme Court, can the law retrospectively amend a withholding tax obligation? And I would believe that that's something which is a real big dampener, that is something which needs to roll back. And the simple way to roll it back is that this got introduced in the Finance Act of 2011. Mm -hmm. All that you need to do is to ensure that it is applicable for transactions which take place from 1st April 2011 rather than it becoming applicable to transactions which have taken place in the past. That one single act will really take away the sting from retrospectivity. You are taxing uh, whatever you need to. Of course, that language in the section is pretty pathetic and uh, needs to be reworded, but that's a matter of uh, sort of putting the section into right framework. All right, let's also talk about GST and DTC because those have been long pending demands from corporate India. Uh, GST, of course, has been, you know, hanging in the balance because of uh, lack of consensus from states and majority of those, uh, ironically, are, are BJP-led states. So do you see, uh, uh, how do you see that panning out? So let me first go to DTC then come to uh, okay. GST because when you say that uh, D DTC and GST are long standing demands from corporates mm -hmm. I have not heard a single corporate ask about uh, DTC the okay. direct taxes code is something with the government wanted to implement I really do not think it's a tax reform at all uh, for a simple reason that here is um, you are substituting the current law with what you believe is a law written in simple terms. And every time you rewrite the law, it gives rise to a number of interpretation issues and a fresh round of litigation. So between the point of time that the DTC was unveiled and today, there have been three budgets. And in those three budgets, a lot of amendments of the DTC have already been put in. Right. So you already grandfathered all the sunset clauses. So there are no more exemptions. A uh, number of other amendments have been put. Uh, there are a couple of things which are remaining like controlled foreign company regulations which can very easily be incorporated in the current law. So to my mind, DTC is not a tax reform at all. Um, the Indian Income Tax Act, is it is it cumbersome worded? Yes, it is. Uh, but at least the positions are known today. According to me, a DTC is not warranted or it's not a tax reform. What about GST? Because, you know, that's something that people say could, you know, that's a reform in which needs to absolutely happen. increase your GDP by 1% and there are a lot of uh, expectations around that. So I think that's a, that's a reform which is waiting to happen. Uh, I think more than, so th there is a need for a consensus on states which by and large has happened. There is this apprehension whether it takes away the financial uh, independence of the state and there are a number of things which have been addressed there already. There is also this issue regarding loss of revenue and again a lot of work has already happened and I see uh, that going through over the next six to eight months. It's not a budget item at all. Sure. There's nothing with the budget needs to do that. That's an implementation item. How does one really get all the states together? Uh, and I would expect that in the next six to eight months, it should happen. But you'd be looking out for commentary nonetheless from the budget. Uh, you know, let's talk about uh, corporate taxes. Do you think uh, the government has the fiscal space uh, right now to rationalize corporate taxes? There have been a lot of demands from industry bodies. Uh, you know, I mean, abolition of MAT, for instance, or, you know, a cut in excise duties. Uh, tax breaks for exporters and so on. Uh, you know, these are very uh, these are demands that 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 sort of come year after year. But particularly this time around, uh, we have a very constrained economy to look. I at. don't see any new tax incentives coming for exports or things like that. They're okay. long gone past that stage. Um, corporate taxes are today probably most competitive in this part this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody can go back and say that we need to re really reduce them any further at all. Uh, Matt is a philosophical issue. Uh, I'm sure the government will want to relook at it, but when that will be when it will have a relook at the entire direct taxes framework, not in isolation. Right. Last couple of questions, sir. And you know, this is to do with tax litigation. You know, generally people finding it very difficult to pay taxes. I mean, there have been calls uh, to completely do away with TDS, for instance. So from from you know that perspective, where you know revenue is not affected, do you see any reforms coming through? So I, I really would not even support any any suggestion that there be no TDS. In fact, TDS has been a framework which has ensured that people who are within the tax net stay within the tax net. Yeah. Um, are there any reforms in the way TDS needs to be monitored? Yes. But I think the point which you made earlier, which I think is a key, is really how do we handle tax litigation? And there are two parts to it. First yeah. is the fact that the litigation continues for about 20 years. Sure. And, and how is there a way to shorten that process? And number two, is there a settlement mechanism which can happen? And I think the answers to both of that are yes. Um, for example, today, there are several processes within tax where there is no time limit. So if, for example, a tax office 
was to make an addition and you went to a commissioner appeals there is no time limit by which he is supposed to dispose of an appeal it could take two years it could take four years it could take six months so really there needs to be time frame uh, on all of that there needs to be an accountability within the tax office meaning if an addition is made repeatedly by an officer and all of those get knocked off in appeal what does that mean really are those additions worth it or not worth it that's one part and second is the settlement mechanism where somebody is should be able to sit with the revenue and come back and say i don't want to litigate there is a middle ground let's sit and resolve this issue okay. uh, that that is there in most part of the world the word settlement in india is a very dirty word we need to find a framework where a group of people can sit with an SSE and agree to a settlement. Right. Just to sum it up, so, uh, you know, would you expect this budget to be uh, populist on the back of a thumping mandate in the elections or tempered by the, the realities of the economy? Uh, I, would, I would expect it to be a bit of both. Okay. Uh, there is a reality staring at us. That reality will undergo a change if our growth goes up. I think it's the first step by the government where it needs to send a few messages. Beyond that, it will need to look at structural reforms which can happen in the ensuing budgets. All right, Mr. Kanaba, thanks so much for talking to Business Standard. Thank you.